After the U.S. needlessly bombed Afghanistan for 20 years, the Biden administration is now stealing billions of dollars from Afghan civilians while pretending they're doing something noble. Now, I will say there is a little more to this story than my intro. <laughs> it's a little more complicated than that. But I'll do my best to uh, break it down here. So President Biden has now signed an executive order splitting $7 billion in Afghan assets that were frozen by the U.S. government. This is money that the Afghan Central Bank kept at the Federal, uh, Federal Reserve Bank in New York before their government was dissolved and the Taliban took over. So more here from uh, the New York Times. The Taliban, now in control of Afghanistan, immediately claimed a right to the money, but a group of relatives of victims of the September 11th attacks, one of several sets who had won default judgments against the group in once seemingly quixotic lawsuits years ago, sought to seize it to pay off that debt. Meanwhile, the economy in Afghanistan has been collapsing, leading to a mass starvation that is in turn creating an enormous and destabilizing new wave of refugees and raising a clear need for extensive spending on humanitarian relief. So on the 9-11 um, aspect of this story, the relatives of the victims of 9-11, this is what that case is about. So more September 11th victims who sued the Taliban want frozen Afghan funds. So this seems a little hard to actually, <laughs> you know, be successful in a suit like this. But apparently that appears to be what Joe Biden is trying to... Um, uh solve here by cutting half of this money out for these victims now i'll get to some reactions from these victims some are not in support of this so it's not you know ripping money away that belongs to afghanistan that belongs to the people there is not the solution to something like this now a little more on the um oh sorry to, just to be clear so yeah the, the seven billion dollars belongs to uh afghanistan so half is going to go to humanitarian relief um, for Afghanistan, and then the other half is going to be put towards uh, this this uh, aspect or this lawsuit here to try and compensate these victims. But um, a little more here from uh, the AP. So the UN last month issued an appeal for nearly $5 billion, its largest ever appeal for one country, predicting nearly 90% of the country's 38 million people were surviving below the poverty level of 190 a day. The UN also warned that upward of 1 million children risked starvation. David Miliband, head of the International Rescue Committee, urged release of the funds to prevent famine at a Senate Ju Judiciary Subcommittee hearing on the matter on Wednesday. Quote, the humanitarian community did not choose the government, but that is no excuse to punish the people, and there is a middle course to help the Afghan people without embracing the new government, Miliband said. So he's basically pointing out here that, sure, we didn't pick the Taliban to run Afghanistan. But that doesn't mean this money still doesn't belong to Afghanistan. And as you'll see here, some victims, at least one in, in this case that's quoted in this piece, agrees that this money does not belong to them. It does belong to the Afghan civilians. But, of course, there's differing opinions on this. So first, a uh, quote here, I lost my wife on 9-11 due to the Taliban's support for terrorism, Mr. Melendez said. Quote, I became a single parent to two of my four sons and then lost my house. First of all, I have to stop. It's not like this is not the <laughs> this is not the full story. Clearly, there were others at play here. Just because um, you had you know a terrorist try and hide themselves at least shortly in Afghanistan does not mean that the war was necessary. That the Afghan government was behind it, or the civilians were behind it. So I understand his anger, his frustration, he lost his loved one, but you can't have misguided anger here in terms of where you think that money should be coming from. But he goes on to say here, I became a single parent of two of my four sons and then lost my house. I've never received any money against my judgment. I think some money should go to humanitarian relief for the Afghan people, but I also want my legal judgment to be fully honored. But not all relatives of the September 11th victims agree. This week, Barry Amundsen, who, whose brother Craig was killed in the Pentagon that day, said his group, September 11th Families for Peaceful Tomorrows, thought all of the money should go to benefit Afghans. Quote, I can't think of a worse betrayal of the people of Afghanistan than to freeze their assets and give it to 9-11 families, Mr. Amundsen said. While 9-11 families are seeking justice for their loss through these suits, I fear that the end result of seizing this money will be to cause further harm to innocent Afghans who have already suffered greatly. 
You know who's also a victim of, of, of 9-11? Afghan civilians. So to try and take half of this money that belongs to Afghan civilians to try and fulfill some wishes of some misguided anger from 9-11 uh, victims' families, it's just completely misguided. It doesn't make any sense. And ultimately, as it says here, it's going to make the situation worse. It's not going to solve anything. It's going to create more resentment, more anger, and that clearly um, is not a way to solve the problem. That said, yeah, I would love to see, you know, these people get compensated, but to take someone else's money to solve that problem is not the solution.